Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for July 31st, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. If you don't know what CircuitPython is, it's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We'll also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording, and the final notes includes timestamps so that you can go uh, skip through the video as you'd like. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, and after each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Uh, just check the pinned messages. Uh, if you wish to participate but cannot attend, or just uh, have things that you want to remember, you can edit that ahead of time. This meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter that goes out uh, just around this time uh, today. Uh, this is new. It's no longer Tuesdays. It's on Mondays. Uh, the second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinko. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. Third is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is kind of the opposite of the state of CircuitPython. It is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. This is how we feel about how everything's going on. Fourth is Status Updates. It's an, a, an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be doing over the coming week. Lastly is In the Weeds. It's an opportunity for more long form discussions. Uh, these discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. With that, I'll take a timestamp and switch tabs to the community news. So uh, community news is a, a snippet slash tease of the newsletter that goes out on Mondays for Python on hardware related news. Um, the first up, uh, the headline article here is that CircuitPython 8.2.1 was released. Uh, CircuitPython 8.2.1 is the, now the latest bug fix version of CircuitPython and is new, the new stable release. Um, there's a link to the Adafruit blog in the release notes. Uh, primarily, this is a continued enhancement of SynthIO, and uh, it also fixes, um, I think it also fixes the uh, double click to, s or the safe mode entry on RP2040. This has alarm sleep memory, which I guess we might have added as well. Um, Note for NRF52 uh, boards only, if your board has an old UF2 bootloader before 061, you won't be able to load CircuitPython 8.2 or later because it's too big. Um, there was a bug in versions before that uh, that you may hit. Okay, next up is CircuitPython Hack Chat. Hackaday.io and Adafruit co-sponsored a hack chat with Adafruit, key Adafruit folks about CircuitPython. If you missed the live broadcast, you can see it on YouTube. And that was more Phil and I. And the YouTube's the best way to go about it. They have a transcript of the chat, but it, a lot of the questions were just answered on the video. All right, next up is Adafruit IO Whippersnapper now supports 20 boards. Uh, Whippersnapper is the no-code firmware for building internet-connected electronics projects. It now supports 20 development boards with more to come. Uh, and it's also, I should say, a huge inspiration for the Wi-Fi workflow on CircuitPython. Just how easy it is to get everything going. Next up, uh, CircuitPython Day uh, kind of snuck up on us, but uh, we wanted to start reminding folks that, uh, or let folks know that we chose to make August 18th um, 
of 2023 is CircuitPython Day. Uh, the annual CircuitPython Day celebrations have been scheduled for August 18th. Keep an eye on the Adafruit blog for announcements as well as next week's newsletter. And if you have ideas, I should say, just feel free to drop those in CircuitPython Day as well. That's a Friday, I believe. Um, I d Drop them in CircuitPython Dev. We don't have a, a separate channel. Okay, newsletter details. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To, to contribute your own news or project, ed edit next week's draft on GitHub. Um, and submit a pull request there with changes. You may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. Uh, and two more notes. And thank you to Katni and Anne and um, Paul for doing newsletter-y stuff. And then also thank you to Katni for uh, getting everything organized for CircuitPython Day. If you have stuff uh, you'd like us to advertise and, and catalog for CircuitPython Day, you can email circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. All right. Next up, uh, state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinko. Uh, this is a statistical report that only includes uh, what's happened in the last seven days. Um, so I will start overall, and then we'll go to the individual pieces of the larger project. So overall, we had 43 pull requests merged from 21 different authors. That's awesome. There's a lot of names that I don't recognize, and that I'm don't, definitely going to butcher uh, pronunciation-wise, but I'll try to get, say them out loud anyway, because this is an audio audio thing. Uh, first, uh, S. Domoslas I-13. <laughs> Uh, Xenocrates, uh, Andy Bing, KB Sriram, Ga Wang, uh, Eric Apchin, Atomic Master, El Pekinin, Mad City Geek, Lint Smitka are all names that I have not seen before and obviously not pronounced as, as well. Uh, those are our new authors, so thank you to them. Uh, we had six reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers. As always, we're looking for more people to review. Uh, so if you want to do that, let us know. We're, we're happy to get you uh, polished up. Uh, twelve So issues-wise, overall, we had 12 closed issues by seven people and 11 open by 11 people. So good number of people involved, and we're still net down one as well, which is great. So I will roll right into the core stats. Uh, 30 pull, 33 pull requests merged to the core. Uh, I won't highlight the new authors again, but we had 14 different authors, so thank you to them. We had five reviewers, which is a good chunk for us as well. We have 31 open pull requests, which is over my gut check of a single page's worth, which is 25. Um, so we'll need to take a look at that and see what we can whittle down. Um, that's a great, uh, super helpful thing. And I think the easiest pull requests to get uh, started with are the ones that are for specific boards. So keep an eye out that, that for those, uh, they should have a label that says board. Um, so that's where we are with pull requests in the core. Uh, issues wise in the core, we had seven closed issues by four people and eight open by eight people. So we're net up one. Ooh, for, a, for a total of 677 open issues. Um, which is kind of uh, about stable, um, and Micah's volunteering to help review. So yes, we can we can do that after the meeting. Thank you, Micah. Um, all right, uh, we organize issues using milestones. Uh, generally, this is intended for Adafruit-funded development prioritization. Um, so let me just quickly read off numbers for that. We have zero open issues for 8.2x, which is great. Um, we have 48 open issues for 9.0. Uh, that's totally okay because we've got a um, long time before 9.0 is stable. And then we have four issues not assigned to milestones, so those will be need, need to be triaged. And with that, um, let's ask Katni to give us an update on the libraries. Absolutely. So this section applies to all of the uh, CircuitPython libraries, which includes the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and uh, everything that has been contributed by our community. 
Across all of those repositories, we had seven pull requests merged by seven different authors and three different reviewers. Um, I'm really excited about those seven. Uh, five of them are over 20 days old. The oldest one was 701 days old. Uh, it's really great to see that we're getting through those older PRs. Um, it was obviously all interesting stuff, uh, but we um, let a lot of it slip. And so it's, it's good to see that we are finally um, able to go back and get uh, things merged. And that leaves us with 55 open pull requests. We had four issues closed by four people and two open by two people, leaving us with 630. 46 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find uh, all of this information and more, including uh, the list of open pull requests and the list of open issues. Um, if you're interested in reviewing, uh, check out the open pull requests. Um, if you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, uh, take a look at the code. Let us know what you think. Um, check it for syntax, spelling, that sort of thing. Or um, if you have any suggestions, uh, go ahead and leave those in a comment. And once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. Um, if you're interested in contributing documentation or code, check out the open issues. Find something that interests you. Leave a comment. Let us know you're working on it. If you're new to uh, everything, uh, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, which is recently updated. Um, and actually, if you're not new to everything, it's still great to check out so you know what our workflow is. Um, take a look at that. And we are always available on uh, Discord to help you get started. Uh, in terms of library uh, PyPI weekly download stats, we had 103,359 downloads over 311 libraries. The top 10 libraries are listed in the notes um, if you're interested. And uh, library updates in the last seven days, we had uh, no new libraries, uh, but a short list of updated libraries. Again, I will not read them off. Um, if you're interested in them, uh, check it out. It's both um, Adafruit and community libraries that are being updated, which is great to see. That's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. And I think Melissa's out uh, today, so I will read them. Um, Blinka is the compatibility, CircuitPython API compatibility layer that uh, allows you to run CircuitPython code on top of, on CPython, Linux, single board computers, and also MicroPython. So this is the status of that. Uh, it had three pull requests merged from three different authors. Uh, one reviewer, maker Melissa. Uh, there are four open pull requests, uh, some on platform detect and some, one on BLEIO and one on Blinka. There's one closed issues by one person and one open by one person for a total of 100 open issues. Uh, stats wise, there were 13,060 PyPI downloads in the last week and there were 9,723 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month. Uh, and there are currently 119 supported boards by Blinka, not including all of the MicroPython ones, I don't think. I think that's all single board computers. Okay, and that's it for the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. Let's move on uh, to Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks in our community for doing awesome stuff. I will start and then we'll go down the list through uh, the folks that have added notes in the notes doc. Um, I will read off the notes if they are marked as text only or something similar. Otherwise, I will yield the, uh, the audio to you. So just unmute and uh, let us know. Okay, so for myself, um, uh, time code, sorry. Uh, first, I wanted to just have a huge, huge hug to Foamy Guy for hosting Deep Dive while I was out and getting going again, uh, allowing, and then also allowing me to resume in the normal spot and offering to cover when I'm out. Uh, thanks for keeping it going and uh, and backing me up so much, Foamy Guy. Thank you so much. And then also another hug, uh, similar to last week, but I still really appreciate it uh, for Attack for continued USB host collaboration trying to get uh, the USB host stack and tiny USB as solid as the device stack. All right. Next up is 2231 Puppy. I just want to give a group hug to everyone here because y'all are awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Next up is Dan. Uh, thanks to Brent. Uh, so we, on Friday, we... Um... We're trying to figure out why uh, a certain update to the Nina firmware 
for boards that use the ESP32 coprocessor didn't work. And so we worked on that together in the afternoon. That was very helpful. And then thanks to Katni, this is a belated hug report, but she did a lot of revisions on, deep revisions on the GitHub guides. It was mentioned last week, and I just want to thank her for that. It was really necessary. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Next up is David. Um, the hug report to you for the deep dive we're starting. Uh, I may have fell asleep somewhere at the end when I was not asking questions. And it was too deep, but that's the time zone, so mm -hmm. it's usual. <laughs> um, a report to uh, John Sosian um, for the weed ramp inclusion into the weed chuck library. Neradoc for helping me on help with circuit Python. I I had a question and yeah, quickly got the right solution. And Mark Gambler for something I might use to make synthio drum sound with my drum. Awesome. Thank you, David. All right, next up, I have notes from DJ Devin 3. Uh, DJ Devin says, uh, Hug report to Superhack for finding and reporting two ESP32 S2 hard fault bugs in their first week of being an Adafruit Discord member. Hug to Carter for spotting an issue with some code I posted. Recalibrated the BME 280 altitude sensor by moving sea level pressure compensation inside the while true loop. A mistake I never caught in more than a year of running my Feather Weather Station. Thank you, Carter. Uh, hug report to the core developers for the A21 release. Uh, S3 matrix portal guide, pin fixes, backporting, and bug fixes this week. Hugs to Scotty P, Human I Think, and Tyeth for spotting the SSL cert disparity in the airlift ports and beta testing Nina 1.75. They provided valuable feedback to help narrow down the Adafruit I.O. issues. And lastly, a hug to Brent R. and Dan H. for sorting out the Adafruit I.O. SSL cert issue that affected all Whippersnapper boards and CircuitPython boards with an ESP32 airlift coprocessor running Nina 1.75 or earlier. With that, let's go to Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Scott. Um, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Dan for keeping the releases moving with 8.2.1 last week. Uh, thanks to you, Scott, for streaming on Friday. Uh, it was great fun to, to watch along. Um, thank you to Michael Pocusa uh, for some additional improvements into the HTTP server library. Uh, a couple of the ones I was most excited about were the WebSocket server, uh, as well as a similar technology called uh, server-side event, which I actually hadn't heard of before. So that one was new to me, but it's also pretty cool. Um, uh, and then Michael also reviewed uh, some contributions that I made in that library as well. So thank you to them for that. Uh, and then I have a hug report also for Maker Melissa for adding support for settings.toml into the portal based library this week. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Next up is Jepler. Hey, folks. It's good you got to me because I just keep adding more hugs as mm -hmm. we go. That's okay. Um, and it would, you know, turn into an infinite list. So I guess I better start with the group hug because y'all are great. Um, to Dan and Brent for behind the scenes sleuthing about trouble updating Nina firmware with the USB pass through sketch. And I think the good news is Dan cracked that part of the problem over the weekend. So uh, we won't be wringing our hands over the difficulty of upgrading those Nina firmwares. Um, to Katni and Paul Cutler for testing the new day for the newsletter publishing and, and for adopting it. I was just thinking about uh, when I run the meeting, I often just need a little bit to to decompress and relax because being on like that for the whole meeting time can be a lot. Um, and what this does is it removes that person as a bottleneck uh, for updating the newsletter with details about the meeting, like the YouTube link. And so next time I run the meeting, I will just be able to relax when it's done. And that's wonderful. So thank you, Anne. Yeah. Uh, and the last one that I thought of uh, was for Dan for continuing to chip away at the MicroPython 1.19 merge along with everything else you do, which is a lot of things. That's what I got. Thanks, Jepler. I had I had the same realization just earlier. I was like, oh, I don't have to like stay in this hot room and get that done immediately. So yeah, happy about it. Okay, uh, next up is Katni. I got a group hug. All right, thank you, Katni. And last up, I have notes from Michael Pakusa, who says, a hug to Foamy Guy for reviewing and testing PRs for the Adafruit 
uh, HTTP server library and Adafruit support for help with an order. All right, next up is status updates. This is uh, done similarly as round robin, uh, but this time we want to hear about what you've been working on in the past week and what you plan on working on in the coming week. This is a great way to collaborate um, on topics that people may have overlap on and just have a broader idea of what everyone's working on. So I will start. Um, I uh, streamed on Friday. Uh, there's a YouTube link there if you missed it and want to watch two hours of me debugging, answering questions and doing um, USB host debugging. Uh, I'm currently in the weeds of USB host and debugging why I had a demo where an IMX host worked with CircuitPython device, uh, but when I moved that over to an RP2040 host, it doesn't work. It both crashes the host and the device. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, so I'll be working on that later today. Um, I need to figure out what my plan is for Friday. Uh, I, I may stream for just an hour rather than two because I am camping this weekend and I'm not sure exactly when we're going to leave. So, uh, keep an eye out for the blog for that and, uh, and I will, I will sort it out soon. So that's, uh, that's the world I live. Oh, the last thing is that the Metro M7 trace that I remixed. Uh, is coming today, so I'm excited to test that and see if it works. Uh, all right, next up is two two three one puppy. So I can I'm continuing to design the PCB for my Circuit Python powered desktop game controller. Um, I'm anxiously awaiting the ne the arrival of the next e fidget, which is version five. If you're keeping track, uh, and I'm hoping to finally finish up a kit that DJ Devin three sent me for testing, and I'm I'm sorry it's taken so long. Awesome. Thank you for the update. Next up is Dan H. Okay, so uh, last Tuesday I released CircuitPython 8.2.1, and in the process of doing that, I ended up with draft release notes for the first 9.0 alpha. But we decided, because there's going to be a lot of churn in the MPY versions, there's going to be incompatible MPY version file changes in the process of moving to 9.0.0. So we probably will not release alphas that have different MPY versions. We may tag them, but we won't necessarily uh, publish them on CircuitPython.org. So um, I'll just keep this draft release note and keep adding to it. I mean, there's a lot of duplication between the 8.2.1 and the 9.0.0 uh, release notes, which is why I ended up with both easily. Okay, I'm still working on the MicroPython v1.19.1 merge. I have two more files to look at and update that have to do with the build process. And then I can start compiling, and of course that won't work, and I'll have to start debugging after that. Okay. And then finally, as was mentioned, um, so we had to update the... Um, Brent had to update... Uh, well, there was an Adafruit I.O. Uh, certificate that expired. And that made uh, talking to Adafruit I.O. with CircuitPython or with um, anything that uses the Nina firmware uh, not work anymore. And so we had to update that quickly. So Brent made a new version of the firmware very quickly, but then it wouldn't upload. So we could not understand why. And uh, we tried a lot of things having to do with the firmware file itself and various other things. And then over the weekend, I narrowed it down to something very obscure, which is the USB stack on the pass-through program on the Matrix Portal M4 and the Pi Portal and similar boards. And so by recompiling that pass-through program so it uses tiny USB, which is an option in Arduino, it works fine. And so uh, the uh, pass-through program UF2s in the update guide have been updated and you are free to update to version Dina firmware 1.7.5 and uh, go ahead and do so if you want to use Adafruit IO and there will be an 822 uh, circuit Python very, very soon that also contains this updated certificate because it's a blocker for those of you using Adafruit IO. Okay, that's it. Awesome. Thanks, thanks Dan, for getting that going. Uh, and yay for tiny USB. All right, next up is David. Okay, so I've got three stuff, one from the past, one for the present, and one for the future. 
So the past I've been playing before my vacation on Nose Jiggler. Basically, a friend came to my home. It's an IT guy. And I did show him and gave him a trinket M0. Then we spent one or two or maybe three hours to make the most jiggler he wanted and trying all of the feature available on the Trinket M0. Um, okay, I've, I've, I've updated that code and I've shared that. Um, it's feature complete, but I wanted to support more boards. But yeah, maybe it's not going to move. So let's say it's finished. Um, recently, I got a Wii drum. Uh, for 17 euro, um, I got Wii drum and two Wii guitar, and that was missing in my collection of Wii devices. So I made a, um, a PR to include that in the Wii Chuck library, which is part of the uh, community bundle. But that library, well, the last time I've been working on it was two years ago, and the GitHub action were um, not accepting it. So with some help, I've upgraded uh, the cookie cutter part and um, then both stuff were merged. Um, and there is also a game pad library that is forming drums or the guitar or some other stuff into a joystick. So I've put my PR for that too. Of course, the ultimate goal of that drum machine is to make the drum noise. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to put all of my test code together into a GitHub and make sound with MIDI or WAV file or maybe with Synth.io and the code from Mark Gambler. And then when I've finished with that, I've got um, acquired quite a few micro dots from Pimahoni. They they made sales and they've sell all of their old stock. And it's a um, very tiny 5 by 7 LED display um, that is dried by um, a chip for which we don't have a library for CircuitPython. Uh, we've got the library for the IS31FL3731, but that Pimaroni stuff used the 3030 version. So I need to try to make it work with the current library or make um, ad hoc stuff so that I can display nice digits with that LED. Sounds good. Thank you for the update. And it did get me, the, the Wii, all of those Wii interfacing things are really interesting because I imagine they're pretty easy to find given that they're past their prime and, and lots of people yeah. probably have them. So it's a great reuse for it. Uh, thanks for the update. Uh, next up, uh, we have notes from DJ Devon 3 who says, uh, helps beta test and replicate a hard fault bug issue uh, 8146 setting Wi-Fi radio enabled equals false. A hard faults on the ESP32 S2 requires a dev to investigate more. Still working on sem semi automating the Fitbit API example without requiring a local server slash browser callback. Their documentation says the SHA-256 API token expires every eight hours. It is undocumented. The API token will stay alive indefinitely if provided refresh tokens. After the SHA-256 token and initial refresh token are copy-pasted into settings TOML, the API example runs forever. Refresh tokens act as a keep-alive token. The only caveat is that you must make a request at least once every 8 hours, otherwise you must start over and generate a new SHA-256 token from their developer tutorial. Fitbit designed their API in such a way to require your microcontroller to always be online. Got an S3 matrix portal and some matrix panels to play with this week. Next up, let's hear from Foamy Guy. All right, I have been working on some library PR reviews. Uh, a couple of the ones that stood out to me this week were in the Turtle uh, portal based in HTTP server libraries, um, but there were a few more spread around, mostly typing and other small things. Uh, I am also still working through the oldest PRs, um, so I got a few more of those wrapped up this week, and I have a couple more uh, with my eye on them to take a look at this week. Um, I also started uh, making a pass through the library Good First Issues to uh, start removing labels from any of them that are too big. Uh, we have a couple of gnarly ones that are still left in there uh, with quite a lot of uh, typing annotations needed. 
Um, so I'm removing those and also ones that have been begun but are just awaiting work or have more complexities than uh, we really want for good first issues. Um, so I'll be back at that uh, this afternoon and throughout this week. And then uh, the other stuff I got into uh, outside of CircuitPython, I've been trying to study some and brush up on web application security. I recently completed lessons around cross-site scripting and uh, went and played around with the HTTP server library for a little bit and found and submitted some fixes that uh, help patch that possibility, uh, at least within the most basic use case of that library. Um, so that's the stuff that I am up to for now. Thanks. Thanks for the update, Foamy Guy. Next up, let's get an update from Jeffler. Hi. Yeah, first of all, we got to get uh, mentioned that I want some of those displays that David is talking about. Uh, but what I've been up to, I've got a number of open pull requests that, uh, at least as of this morning, needed to be reviewed and hopefully merged. There is an update of ProtoMatter in CircuitPython that improves the timings on the ESP 32S3 in particular, as I understand it. Um, the update to Nina firmware in CircuitPython, which we've talked about, and uh, an update for the camera board, uh, which there is an existing camera board definition for the ESP 32S2. The current prototype has the S3. Uh, Dan very kindly started on the review when I asked him about it earlier this morning. Um, so I'll, I'll check in on where all of those are. Um, after this. And then the final one is not within CircuitPython, but in a, a repo that we use as a submodule that speeds up probing for a camera. For reasons I don't understand, the ESP32 camera library probes all of the IA squared C addresses um, once first and then does nothing with the results besides print them if you're in debug mode. And when you remove that, it trims like four seconds off of the detect time for the camera. So that was a really good improvement that wasn't very difficult to do. I've also been working on bringing up to date the PyCamera application, which is just a small library and a code.py that work in CircuitPython. Um, two of the special effects modes that were in the old version of the camera interfacing library have disappeared. One was overexposed, which isn't very interesting. The other is Solarize, and I'm going to see if I can restore that uh, by re-adding it to the ESP32 camera library that we adopted. Um, and I was testing this at the coffee shop, so I forgot my SD card reader, and I need to actually check that uh, it's not only showing the effect on the display, but it's applying the effect to the saved JPEG file. Um, and just for those of you who are wondering where is this code, uh, for the short term, it is in a private GitHub repo, so there is nothing to see yet, but of course this will be public by the time the product uh, actually exists for you to order. All right, the, another camera-related functionality, QRIO, to read QR codes. Um, I didn't set up like a whole application for running that on the camera, but I did uh, run a test that's designed to run on the host computer during CI just to verify that the, like, the actual low-level QR decoding library is working, and that does work on the ESP32 S3. Talking about something else for a minute now, we've got this um, ongoing project to upload custom audio files to the 2017 Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, one of our guide authors, Erin, went through the process. She ran into some snags, and I improved one of the draft guide pages uh, based on her feedback. And we have a special audio encoder because it uses a weird audio format. I added pre-compiled binaries for the uh, Raspberry Pi 64-bit OS to it and verified that that library can be released uh, by Adafruit rather than by me because I don't want stuff to only be doable by me. Um, and just to note, the system that's used for building wheels can't do 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS, but if you have the right development files installed on your computer, your Raspberry Pi, it will pull it down and build it. As far as I know, I haven't tested it. All right, another change in subject. Uh, we had somebody come by the Discord, um, I, I think it was on Friday, um, with difficulties using the um, Spark Fun's Teensy Micromod board to output I2S audio. And it turns out the cause is the pin assignments are not what CircuitPython expected. Uh, I2S has several pins, including a pin called the B clock, which I think is the bit clock. And there turns out to be a distinction between transmit 
B clocks and receive B clocks, and we will only use the transmitting one. You can actually use either one, you just need a couple of added lines um, to use the other clock based on looking at the code in MicroPython, which does work on this board. However, I didn't implement anything yet because we didn't need it for the Metro 1011. So there is now an issue out there uh, suggesting to add this, and it will maybe allow some flexibility in future designs based on NXP. So that's good knowledge to have. What's coming up? Um, so actually creating a full uh, QR code recognizing demo for the camera, um, adding a display to the camera board definition, there's something to be revisited there for the next redesign um, as to how the backlight is turned on, and so that's going to be deferred. But turning on or you know setting up the display, so there's board dot display we're going to do, um, and then Lamore had another number of other items for me to work on, uh, most of which were related to the camera board, and if I get all of those done, we're also going to see if we can make Doom run on it. So when people ask, does Doom run on it, we can say yes. And the last thing is, outside of my computer world, I helped a friend move apartments this weekend. She's all set in the new place, but it was a pretty exhausting two days for the three of us who were doing it. Uh, the weather was actually not bad for it, though, so I'm thankful for that. And that's what I'm up to. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Doing lots of cool stuff. Uh, last up is Katni. Hello. Uh, so I added the CircuitPython Essentials pages to the Feather ESP32 S2 Reverse TFT Feather guide. Apparently I typed Feather twice. Um, that guide was done a while ago, but the CircuitPython Essentials pages were not added at that time, and so I circled back to that. Um, in doing that, I updated the Adafruit IO Send and Receive Data template to use settings.toml. That's a template that's in all ESP32 S star guides. Um, and it was still using secrets, so that should be updated. I also tidied up the createyoursettings.toml file page, which is in a Pico W guide, um, but it's mirrored into a number of other project guides, and now it can be used in any guide that requires a settings.toml file so that each guide author does not need to recreate how to, um, how to write the settings.toml file. I'm currently working on the ADXL 3480T7410 Featherwing guide. This is a board that we put out a long time ago, and apparently never had a guide for. It's going to be a quicker one because we're not putting code in it because there's already guides for both of those sensors um, and combining the two is, is rather simple. And then next up is going to be the Metro RP2040 guide. That's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katni. Uh, and with that, that is status updates. Uh, next up would be in the weeds. But we have no topics for in the weeds, so we're just going to keep rolling right through here. I'm going to pull up the uh, notes for how to wrap up, and then we'll wrap up. So this has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for July 31st, 2023. Thank you, everyone who made it and participated, uh, or did not participate, and just and are, are listening in. We really appreciate it. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Um, the video of this meeting will, re will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. And also a note from Jeff who says you can email Day at adafruit.com with your own events or Python Day, which is August 18th so just over or just under three weeks away um, the next meeting let me pull up my calendar and just double check will be normal time next week uh, Monday uh, as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern 11 a.m. Pacific as a reminder this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server which you can always join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord uh, to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Aces role on Discord. With that, we hope to see you all next week and on the Discords in the meantime. Thank you, everyone.